Okay, we're live. Um, to make the symmetric turret a little bit better, I want to incorporate um, a potentiometer into it to um, basically have some some user input. Um, oh, one moment, something's just gone very loud, very quick. What the living hell is that sound? Oh, it was it was Twitch. Okay, yeah, fine, whatever. Um, apologies for that. Right, so then, um, I want to make a, a case for a potentiometer. Um, that way, when I incorporate it into the design of the Symmetra turret, um, it doesn't look too weird, or it'll be it'll be a job already done. Um, so in theory, it shouldn't be too too difficult. Um, this is what a potentiometer looks like from the back from front on and a few different ones so it's basically a variable resistor uh, you you spin the knob and it um, increases or decreases decreases uh, the resistance so we can we can use that to tell the Arduino how much of something we want for example um, whether it's a case of turning uh, between one and eight of the LEDs on or uh, you, you know you get it halfway around and it starts doing fun different patterns um don't quite know entirely what i'm going to do with it in terms of uh well which of the options i've just given there um possibly all of them it may not be pragmatic for me to do so but regardless i'm going to need it incorporated into the turret um so i figured might as well make a stream out of uh attempting to make one all right so one of the easiest ways i found um to, to make a case for the item is just to ba basically make a, a, a rough rough version of the item itself so that's what we're going to do on the back it's got a uh, got a protrusion of 16 mil uh, a circle even of 16 mil so that'll be uh, 8 radius oh okay right or is that the diameter? Do you know what? The arrows make that look like it's the diameter. And give it an extra half a mil just so it's got a bit of um, room on there. And let's just make another one where I know it's the radius. So radius of eight in theory will be the same size. That looks good. Right, so then we've got the circle on the back of the potentiometer. And let me just have a quick read as to uh, how far down that needs to go. So we're looking to extrude that. It's eight and a half mil, so we'll extrude it nine mil. So we've got a little bit of playroom on there. That really doesn't look right, but that's fine. This is fine. So let's let's keep going back to that. So, uh, like I say, the this one and this one are the ones it's uh, most like. Um, so, what's next? Right. What we're going to need to do is design the flat bit with the three terminals that come out of there. So, this little bit here. That's what we're going to do. And there might be a quick loop of the audio just while I check everything seems to be working. Yep, fantastic. And right, so then uh, we know the width is going to be 18. Um, doesn't really matter at the length at the moment um, because no, let's just let's do it properly. Let's do it properly or not at all. Right. The length until the terminals from the halfway point of the uh, circle, which is going to be important, we can only use the halfway point to get it absolutely perfectly, is, mm, I'd say, 12 mil. That's fine. Right, so we need it to be 12 mil long. That's great. Nice and easy. We want it to probably not be more than a millimetre high. Let's just double check that. Two mil high, let's do two mil high. And the width, we want that as 16 because we want it to be the. Th oh god, that all went so wrong. There we go. Nope, that stayed wrong. 
Okay, right. So you might be able to see uh, roughly what I'm going to be doing here. That's not right. That can't be right. Why can't that be right? Let me just double check. Wait a minute, I'm being stupid, aren't I? Sorry, I was um, using the width to judge it. No, it's the right bit. It is the right size. I'm just, I'm just being stupid. I can't even blame it on lack of sleep yet. Save that excuse for tonight. Right. <coughs> oh yeah, at the moment I do plan on doing another um, stream later on for the Symmetra turret, but this is just just a little warm up, uh, a warm up one. Right. Yep, so now what we'll do is we'll just extrude that a little bit more um, and it will give us the, uh, the the half circle rather than trying to extrude the, the straight bit up we'll extrude the uh, round bit across there we are, that one there and we'll just pull that out, I want to get that level so it needs to come out another 2mm, it'll end up coming out further later but nice easy 2mm, that should be nice and flush almost it's almost nice and flush this could do with it going over to the left probably about half a mil if that so let's do it properly oh no too far right let's go minus half a mil oh, too much quarter of a mil perfection nearly sort of maybe it's all right Okay, let's just get rid of the five there then. So I'll do that. It doesn't need to be perfect. I need to remember that at the moment. This isn't uh, about getting that perfect, right? So that, like I say, this bit can get extruded out. In fact, let's let's see what the total distance between the top of the circle and uh, and the bottom of here is on the real world item. Twenty mil. Twenty mil is quite easy. Theory. What we'll do is we'll just make another one, or another box there, and call it. It's twenty by twenty by twenty. That's fantastic. So then, to try and get this as as mathematically great as possible. Oh wait, no. I need to combine those two. One moment. And excellent. That may have been a mistake because I can now no longer um, extrude just a circle. But if that does turn out to be a mistake, I won't know for a little while yet. And hopefully I will have forgotten by then. So we're just going to try and align these. Okay, right, maybe I already did this because they, they look pretty good. They look pretty good. Let's just move that over there. No, I did it wrong. No, no, take it back. There we go. <coughs> that looks good enough. And then we'll extrude. Why? Why did that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's fine. This is all good. She doesn't need um, pulling out more than a, a mil or two. There we go. Okay, you can go. And right, let's have a little look at the device. So we'll put three little prongs on there as well, just just for a laugh, really. Right, so we want a radius of one, length of five, radius of 0.75 actually. Yeah, 0.7, that'll do. Right, so copy it, paste it, and move it over. Copy it, paste it, move it over. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 
And what I'm going to do is basically group together these three once I can get them all in line. Where did it, why did it disappear? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It's okay, they're allowed to disappear, I guess. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. Right, so I'm not going to combine them because there's no overlapping parts. Um, I am going to group them together, though. So now I select one of them, and I've got all three of them nice and easy. And I think you can see what we're going to do here. In order to make these three prongs, we're just going to attach them on there. I, could, I might be able to get away with snapping it on, but at the same time, this might go badly. Okay, I thought they would all move together. Apparently snap overwrites that, which is fine. That's fine. That's actually useful. If it wants to be. No, no. What, what's the play now? Oh, I see what you've done there. You've stacked two into one. So let's unsnap one of those. I think that's the unsnap button. And transform and move over. And rather than getting the third one up there and over... I'm just going to, well, first of all, I'm going to unselect it, and then select it again. <laughs> uh, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Probably because it's still under the snap setting. So if you unsnap it there, then you can see I've just got that one thing selected. So copy, paste, move over a little bit. And then we'll just merge all them together. One, two, three, five. Lovely. So as you can see, the uh, the basic shape of the potentiometer is coming along. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're making a case for it rather than uh, a 3D model of the actual item. But having um, an accurately scaled model definitely helps make the item uh, case a lot easier. Um, because, well... There's a very easy way to show you how and why. Let's let's go for uh, 40 by 40 by 40 box. So we've got a nice easy box there. What we can do? Uh, split face. No, we need a line. We need a line. Any line will do. This line doesn't need to be perfect. It's just an example. Solid, then use a splitting entity there. Yep, that's cool. And so we've now got two boxes. So copy and paste this one that we're going to do the front bit. So I didn't see actually how far along I moved that. That was a rookie error. So I think I've just undone that. So we're going to copy it and paste it. And I'm going to be very careful to take note of how far along I've got it. 45 mil. 45 mil. Fantastic. So then let's just move that one back a mil. Or three. Then what we're going to do is good old subtract. So this is the bit we want to keep and make it a perfect copy from that. Fantastic, right? So this one can just bugger off. Uh, I don't know why that's there, if I'm honest. Doesn't matter. It's just the principle I'm showing you for now. Copy, paste. It was. Ooh, no, no, let's move that back three mil. I remember now, that would have nearly been a rookie error. I said that, there we go, that would have nearly been a... There we are. Okay, right, so it's 45 mil over on the uh, x-axis. And then we minus that using that. Another little phantom one, just stay in there, that's fine. So now, 
if we wanted, if I wanted to print this out, then it's a very simple, clear um, case that should fit the potentiometer. Obviously, I'd have to quite simply put. Uh, oh, let's just move that one. No, nope, that one. I'd have to put some holes through here so that it could um, go through quite comfortably. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'm going to do that, but with a slightly smaller um, case. And on top of the potentiometer, there is um, a cylinder. Let's see what size it is. A 7mm hole would be fantastic, or a 7mm um, cylinder. Uh, that's 7mm diameter and 12 long. So let's quickly make one of those. Let's not mess around. Let's, let's add the handle as well. So it's a 7mm diameter, which is a 3.5 radius. Amazing math skills. And the height, I think, was 12, but I've already forgotten. I used all my brain power on the amazing maths. 12, cool. Okay, right, so that's a knob. Look at the knob. Isn't that funny? Uh, that's all, we might as well align them. It won't do all of the... Um, the axes because it's it's a bit of a weird item and also let's merge not all of it together just yet no that's the track that could have been embarrassing and it says all three are on I don't know why it didn't delete that bit earlier I, let's not overthink it I was attempting to align right, so one See, there's some that it does okay. There are one axis that it does well enough. <coughs> Love it. Looks good. Right, so we have a scale model of a potentiometer. As I showed you earlier, it's very easy to make something from there, um, which is what we're going to do because this, the uh, basically the wires need to come off here, the three wires, the ground, the live, and the variable, um, and where the the twisty turning knob will be on the end of here. The, the casing needs to cover there and have a, a hole through the wires. Um, I'm just going to whip to the toilet and then we'll crack on with that.
Right, and I'm back. So, as I said before the break, we've got the potentiometer done. So now we're going to make a case for it in some way um, that incorporate the two features that I want on this case. And that's, it doesn't need to look like anything good. It just needs to have the three holes sticking out or one long thin hole for the wires to come out. It's just going to be little jumper cables. Doesn't need to be um, heavy density wire or anything. And this little metal bit here, which again, bring up the image. That's going to be uh, the the, pe the bit that people twist um, to increase or decrease the resistance. And then with that basic analog input, we can uh, tell the Arduino what we want to do with the LEDs. Um, hopefully, hopefully, I might try and I might try and do uh, a broadcast of me me uh, writing the pins together. It's going to be a lot of me jumping into Google and then jumping back on Arduino and then jumping into Google. And yeah, it's been a while, but it'll be interesting to see how bad that goes. And let's be honest, everyone loves watching someone else's failure more than someone else's success, don't they? Come on. Right, so then. How are we going to do this? What do we want from it? Something simple? Start off with a circle on the top, or oh, no, that's too simple. Right. So let's go for 25 length. That looks good, but we can probably do 30 quite comfortably. 30 length. The width at 20 looks pretty good because the width of the item is um, 16 mil. So we'll keep 20 for now. The height. The height is probably about right, but I want more to work with. I want more space to work with, but maybe I should add that in when I need it, as and when I need it. Right, you know the drill, copy, paste, save to somewhere else before you try uh, messing around with it. I've got an unnerving feeling that this is about to go a little bit too easy and a little bit too well. Which is a rare feeling, it's a rare feeling. Right, so we'll call the uh, the, the flat plane of the, um, the bottom surface. We'll call that the part of the working space for now and utilize that. Put the lime in the coconut. Ah. Right, right, new plan. Let's undo that. In reality, these three little bits coming off are problematic and actually hinder my design. It was great to have the visualization, but they hinder the design because what I should do is just extrude, and I might still be able to, but equally I might not be able to. Come on, not that bit. Not I don't want that bit. Can I get rid of that bit? I've unsnapped it. No, I can't. I, I, I made it pretty committed. Okay, right, new plan, snap that to that, snap it to that, good, I'm about to delete all of your little bits in a quick and easy manoeuvre, but I don't want to just yet, actually, first of all, I shouldn't be using snap so much, because that's how I got into this problem in the first place, second of all, I haven't copied, oh, I've got a copy over there, okay, no, never mind, never mind. I want that bit and we're going to use that bit to delete it and that's that's literally one two three design giving me the middle finger <laughs> you can't delete me that easy subtract has failed you what will you do now I guess I'll die can I delete ah ha 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 I won that round right Doesn't matter about it being too big. Let's just go 
going to leave that over there. I'll swap it. Oh, that wasn't even the right size. Oh, it was the right size. Ignore me. And copy that because we don't use the live one, do we? No, sir. Right. So then, where were we? This bit needs to go down a bit. And then we'll align these two up. pretty good I mean, you can see where the shape it's going to take is um, what I might do actually is let's pretend that's a real life-size model of it and let's just scale it up by just by 10% which after printing means a little bit less sanding in theory right so that's that's 10% so uh, all I've done is a couple of bits, but it's still worth me saving the changes and making them accessible in case it all goes horribly wrong. From that, take that. Right, so this, this in theory, is a case for a potentiometer. Now, as some of you might be guessing, the problem's going to come when uh, I try and put it in there because it is just one solid block of plastic and after printing it'll be all full of support material um, but I don't think it'll take a genius to think what I'm about to do next it's not circular pattern I love circular pattern but this is one of those few situations it can't work with um, the split body uh, split solid with sketch is what we're gonna do where where would be best could do it straight down the center and then just feed the the joints through there I could do it along this line but then that'll create a very weak top bit for it all of this is fine So I'm thinking for now, just straight down the middle, and then I can always glue it on later, in theory. There is There are other things I can do, put a, a small latch in or something like that. Um, maybe we will, maybe we won't. So let's, see, let's see how it goes to begin with. So just a simple little line. So it might even be easier to, to, to cut it vertically rather than horizontally you know right it doesn't matter we've got a copy and if we haven't then we need one that, that line is nowhere near where I need it to be it's almost trying to will me to split it vertically you know what we'll do both we'll do both that's what we're going to do we're going to do both because why not no wrong one move not a line and move that over there roughly the middle doesn't need to be perfect doesn't need to be perfect at the moment sometimes it does and you spend ages zooming in on a massively blown up model just to get one little angle right other times doesn't matter rush through it because this bit isn't important or as important so what we're going to do is slice that up so now we've got a vertically cut one we're going to bring this bad boy over and we're going to slice this one horizontally so we need to move that 90 degrees pow and then we need to lift it up so it's about halfway through i'm going to use the other box as a rough guide as to where it's going to end up so about there looks good looks good maybe a little bit higher Yeah, that's good. I don't think it'll make any difference the fact that it's it's lying submerged inside of another model that we're not going to be cutting. But I might be about to learn differently. One, 
two, three. Looks safe, looks legit. All right. Hmm. I mentioned earlier, oh, I could put a latch on of some form. But do you know what? Let's let's play around with that. Let's play around with the idea of what we can do with a latch. Um, let's import this selection. In theory, we won't do anything else with that specific model for now. Import, I mean export. Uh, it doesn't need its own folder. I love having though, the own folders for individual things, but it doesn't need it. Uh, so this was the horizontal one. Um, Yep, that'll do. Nope, I just made a rookie error. I've put them both in the cure at the same time. What I should really do is do it in STL. Uh, sorry, send it in one, two, three files and separate them out from there. Hmm. Sod it, yep. Okay, cool, right. What I might try and do is once um, I've got something printed at the moment, something quite small, part of a, a symmetric turret, um, an early prototype, so to say. Um, I don't think that will take very long. I'm pretty sure it was a half hour print, and that was when I went to the toilet just now, so maybe 10 minutes ago. Um, once that's done, I'll I'll send this one out and I'll get that ready now actually. Uh still broadcasting, lovely. And right. Yeah. And original and one, two, three. And right. But the fact I've sent the exported one and I haven't actually sent um, save the main one yet is probably a problem. Oh well. But a problem that can be easily rectified. Right, so I'm not selecting anything specific. Lovely. That's it. Cool. There we go. Right. So let's minimise that for now. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'll ignore that. Hundred and eighty. And there. Right, so we'll export these two separately to Cura. Original, Cura, Cura. Not as one, two, three, design. And. Nice and easy, and then the next one, same again, drop down, one STL, and could probably very easily print them both out at the same time. In fact, I probably should. I probably should. What's the point in doing two separate prints? They're only going to be very, very quick. So, obviously, if we're not selecting a specific model, we don't need to export um, specific bits. We can just export as 3D. STL, same again. Yep, that'll do. Right, so that's, that's that done. Uh, yep, yep, you can save that, whatever. Let's have a little look and see how good that is. 
This is a very small file. A fatal error, yeah, that'll make a file small. Okay, yeah, this is fine, that's fine. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's doing that, but I don't need to overthink it. Right, so for one tiny little uh, part of the case, which, again, there's there's options to make this a lot more efficient. In fact, do you know what? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna be waiting to print it anyway, let's go, let's go make it more efficient. Don't need to do a lot. Maybe a, a quick chamfering of a couple of the edges, um, and then take it from there. Where was uh, that? Was all of them? Did I not save an STL of that one bit? Which is fine. That's fine. So then, where exactly have I got space to trim from? From push this edge in quite comfortably all the way down to the hole in theory but I want to give a bit of leeway do you know what do you know what I can do that that and that and let's see what looks better I think the rounded edges will look better but let's look at both because why not that looks pretty good I've, I've already decided, you know, even if this looks amazing, it's, it's, it's almost certainly going to be the rounded edges. Okay, I've changed my mind. Well, the circle doesn't look perfectly lined up, but that's fine. That's fine. I did say quite a few times, um, just about getting it done for now. Right, so now that will just sit on top of there. Do you know what? There's something else I can do here as well. <coughs> okay, I like that. I like that. But, I think in its current situation, the horizontal cutting means I won't physically be able to get the um, the terminals on the end into there. Maybe if I cut it, yeah, no, it's that's that's not happening. Which is fine. That that's good. That means we know which of the two we want. It just happens to be the one that didn't get worked on. That's fine. This is fine. So then, right, same again. In theory, the dimensions can be cut down to the same uh, same respective um, size there. It's going to be quite difficult pushing this bit back without that horizontal cut. But, I mean, I could, I could cut it horizontally, work on it, and then reattach it. Or I could do the work that I've done on this one, and then, yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna. We, this one that we've done the work on is gonna get reattached and then cut vertically. It's not a genius idea. I'm just sort of mitigating the stupidity. I just I try to undo some of the bad decisions earlier. I'm making another one at the moment, but I'm not using the align tool. But 
we'll make it work. That's fine. Let's bring that in a little bit. Try and match with above. Well, I like what it's doing at the uh, the bottom corner there. It's just a bit out, isn't it? It's just a bit out. Which, in theory, that's cool. I'll uh, do what I did with the dragon's egg to rectify this. I'll bring them both over here. I'll scale them up to be absolutely massive. Get them lined up from there. And then shrink them back down. Oh, they're big. I will see if the align tool can do any of the job for me, actually. You know, like all of the job. That'd be nice. Thank you, align tool. I think I can probably quite comfortably merge these now. So unsurprisingly, that's what I'll do. Boom. Right. Probably should have scaled it down and then cut it, but I don't think it'll make any difference. It occurs to me the problem with scaling it. It is now no longer the perfect size for the potentiometer, and it's going to be difficult to find what size to get it back to the perfect size, even if I match up with these. Right, I could either undo to before I made it massive and just use the align tool, and that should work without drama, or I could make it roughly look the right size and use one of these smaller ones to, to get it right. I am going to roll the cigarettes and think about that. I think the smartest option is to undo it all and take it as a lesson learnt. Or I could try and fix it. <laughs> I could try and fix it and maybe make it better along the way. Yeah, I'm already pretty decided on that. I'm still going to have the cigarette, but I'm already pretty decided on that. I'm, I'm going to try and undo it to before I made it huge. Just going to jump on the Twitch and make sure everything's still broadcasting and some such. Oh, two people! Two, look at that! Woo! So again, this was supposed to be the the, the quick one, the, the warm up, the warm up broadcast, the the just quickly make a potentiometer and get it done. I've got I've got quite a big task ahead in that I really want to get that Symmetra turret to a point where I can sell it. If I can potentially sell that and supplement my income, I can I can put off things for for another day or two. And if I can do that enough, then all of a sudden 70 years have passed and I didn't need to be employed by someone else again. That would be lovely. Wouldn't that be great? But for now, I need to work on my first sell, sale. And for that, I need to work on my designs. And then print them. And then sand them. And then paint them. And then get the Arduino. And make a rig for the LEDs to go in. And then wire them all up. And then wire in a potentiometer. And then code the LEDs. And code the potentiometer. Oh, God, fuck it. Maybe McDonald's is hiring.
Oh, another cold tea. This is this is the true victim of streaming, isn't it? I pay attention to things that aren't the temperature of my tea, and that's oh, well, that that'll do. It's not great, but that'll do. Right, so then, it was undoing till this thing shrinks itself. That's the plan. Come on, buddy. I believe in you. There. Okay, right, actually, go, go back over there as well. <laughs> okay, right, so then, I have undone my little mess up. And I know that uh, on a massive scale, the align tool works for this. Um, so let's let's hope it. Oh, why don't you just select them both? Um, so let's hope it does for the smaller scale as well. It was central, and it was as far back as possible. That looks good. Cool. Right. Let's merge them. Those could all go over there. Okay, the line disappeared. Darren Brown, eat your heart out. No, seriously, where'd it go, though? I don't want that just, just lying around. Has anybody seen my poly line? Where's my poly line? Not that one. I know about that one. It just, it just disappeared. I had it in my hand. And then I orbited and the shadows change and now it's just gone. Oh, there it is. That's quite far away. <laughs> That's not a line, is it? What is that? What? When? That's, that can't be the line, can it? Oh, yeah, that's a line. That's a line. Do you know what? It was going to be deleted, but it's just... It's, no, no, it's still going to be deleted. Great magic trick, now you're dead. Right, back to Sirius, what was I doing? Oh yes, splitting this vertically. Uh, I don't think, what did I do so wrong there? And let's cut them open like a surgeon. Have I got a copy of that? No, I do not. So I am getting ahead of myself. I do love seeing like time lapse design uh, progression. It's quite beautiful. Well worth the chugginess on the PC that comes later. Uh, right. Wasn't too happy how uncentralized that was. What am I doing? That one. There we are. That one there, and that one there, and cool. Right, so then, now you can see where the, the potentiometer goes, nice and easy. I print that out, I can glue them together and have it in a, a nice, slightly more aesthetically pleasing case. Look, it'll look a little bit better um, than that. However, 
what if something goes wrong? What if I need to uh, get back in there and get it sorted? No, I remember now. Bear me one moment. Right, my printer's still printing, but I wanted to get this ready to print. So, hmm. Should I send this to Cura now or try and put some kind of latch on it? I think a latch. Which means these two, you know where they're heading? To safety in the graveyard. And actually, I need a copy of those. Probably should have sent the copy to the graveyard. See, if it was a bigger design at this point, I'd um, start a new uh, file and export these two and then work on them. But it's quite a small file and there's not too much left to do. Right, if I remember rightly, it was... Was it 16 mil? It was 20 mil wide, the two of them together. So, let's see what we can do. We want one... Let's go 23 mil. We don't need a lot of width at all, and we only want maybe two mil. Two mils will be more than enough. So 23 mil. I, I think I think 23 mils probably a bit too much on there, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Experimental phase. That's what we'll call it. We need two of them. Right. How's going to be best to do this? Because there are a number of ways that it could be done quite well. Move that over a little bit. Wouldn't mind gr grouping these two together just to make it um, a bit more consistent. And I'll try and do whatever I do with one, I'll do with the other. For now, this can pretend to be one. Is that perfect? Yep. Cool. Right. So I want to put two of these on the one side. Oh, maybe it'll be easy just to show you what I'm thinking. Right, now I should be able to use the align tool. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, actually. If I align all of them. Okay, right, that thing just needs to go somewhere else for a little while. There, I can go there. I do want to be careful because I uh, rushed into it earlier when I enlarged it and forgot that there were uh, a few rules in play that I need to be consistent with otherwise things go wrong such as the size of the potentiometer with regards to uh, uh, the casing the size of the casing that's the one right I thought they were on top of one another, you know. Oh, no, just a little bit more tweaking. Perspective is a hell of a drug. Right, so I'm going to line those two. To the back most. And then, is that the central one? There it is. That looks good. That looks real good. Almost. Well, it says it's lined up, but I don't... My human eyes say this computer is wrong. Which, I think we all know that means I'm wrong, but still. Yeah, there we go. Right. <coughs> So now what we can do is merge that with that and that. And what we're going to do is bring that down. In theory, it just needs to go down. Wish I remembered the number. I didn't. I forgot. Yep, 
that looks good. <laughs> it's not, but it looks good. That's good. That, however, there, that's not good because I merged these. But I think, given there's gaps, I can click separate uh, separate solids into individual parts, and there we go. They're all they're all good now. I'm also going to try and select the other one as well. Like I say, if I can do them both at the same time, it should save me effort. I want them touching, but I don't want them overlapping because that will make it uh, print a little bit weird. Oh, unsurprisingly, they're, they're a touch too far back, almost as if the align tool that I uh, didn't trust the results of was right. There's a lesson there somewhere for those with the insight to learn it. Not me though, right. So you can, you should be able to roughly see what I'm doing here now. Um, let's bring that forward a millimeter. The whole one. It doesn't matter, those two don't need to be perfect. Right, now we want to extrude just these tiny little bits here. Um, there are a couple of options for us to do this. Um, I could generate a separate solid, as I did earlier, um, using the line and cutting it in half and then making that longer and then reattaching it. That's probably uh, an easy way of doing it, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to cut the sketch, the, the, the face of, um, of uh, a solid. Um, so then you can start playing around with that edge. I'm almost certain there's a way of doing it. Split face. Split the face of a solid using a sketch or a solid. Yep, that's what we want. That's what we want. So then, you there. Oh, we're dealing with 10% of a millimetre, we'll, that, that'll do. So I might need to flip this 90 degrees, where did I find it? I don't really use this one much, so let's see what happens. And those two, and the splitting entity, looks good, that looks good. So, let's see, you can go somewhere, probably should have copied and pasted this bit here with these bits attached, but I didn't, that's okay. Right, so I could either just pull that down. No, 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 I couldn't. I thought the face splitting thing would prevent that. Okay, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. Because I'm pretty sure I can use maybe push and pull rather than tweak. Let's see. Yes, I can. So can you see what's what the plan is? So let's do four mil down, which is quite a bit that might be too much that might not I don't know I'm gonna to have to find out by experimenting wish I'd done it on both at the same time doesn't matter it was four mil a nice easy number to remember that one there put down four mil do 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 Let's check the back of it I can't really check oh yeah I can check through there that's looking good actually right now I could put another one over the top um, so it's secured on the top and the bottom. Probably should. But you know what? I think just a little bit sticking out might might do the job. But 
do you know what? It doesn't matter what I think. It's it's what what prints off. So I'm going to call that a day in terms of the the design inside of it. Um, I might need to merge a few bits actually. You know what? No, 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 that'll be fine. Right, so let's save that. Really need to get in the habit of taking more pictures while going along as well. I'm just angling things around just to get a good picture or at least a picture <coughs> right there we go there's a few pictures done right so we don't, obviously don't want to export the whole file, I just want these two. Let's see if the export selection works a little bit better this time. Because something went wrong last time. Don't know what, don't care what, it just didn't work. Let's try overriding the uh, that one, yes. Right. I have just saved it, but it'll probably ask me to anyway, and I'll say yes anyway. Because I'm scared. Right. Lovely, it's still working. Hello. Hey, that's I was there just now. Right, anyway, um let's let's have a little look at the G code. And it sounds like my printer's done, so I will probably um get this printing straight away. And if I it's getting later than I thought, this was like I say supposed to be uh twenty minute and a half hour warm up and it's currently Oh, where am I even looking? An hour. That's not as bad as I thought it would be. That's not as bad as I thought it'd be. Um, so let's have a little look. So this will take an hour to print. This will take an hour to print. Um, I'm going to print it, I think. So, um, yeah. If you're, uh, if I do end up doing another stream later on, hopefully this will be printed. I'll um, try and get some pictures uploaded on the Instagram at some point if you fancy it. And uh, yeah, if you are online later on, um, take a look in. I will be, in theory, um, I still need to finish the sword for the crown of winter. Um, but that's that's a sideline project for now while I uh, attempt to, to crack through this Symmetra turret. Because if I can get that looking good, if I can make that a sellable point, um, then that's awesome. I can, I can see if I can see if there's any interest from there. There might not be, and I might have to get a warehouse job, but nah, you never know. Enjoy. <laughs>